Will quantum computing destroy blockchain? There is no blockchain. Hello world, it's Siraj, and the internet is ablaze with talk about quantum supremacy right now. That's because a research paper authored by Google claimed to achieve it. It was briefly posted on a NASA website before being removed. Luckily, I found a leaked copy, which I've linked for you in the video description. In this episode, we're going to talk about what they actually did, what the applications of quantum supremacy are, and we'll learn a quantum resistant encryption algorithm called A New Hope. In the paper, they claim that their quantum computer was able to perform a certain calculation in three minutes and 20 seconds that would take today's most advanced classical computer about 10,000 years. Yes, that did make me salivate. But here's the key takeaway. Google built a quantum computer that can do something faster than a classical computer, not something useful. This was a sign of much needed progress in this field because over the past 20 years, despite billions of dollars having been spent on quantum computing research, no quantum computer was used even once to solve any problem faster than a laptop could, or at least not in any way that depended on it being a quantum computer rather than a classical computer. Google demonstrated that quantum computing is a real phenomenon. There is no fundamental reason why we can't build useful quantum computers, just temporary technological limitations. Quantum supremacy is a word used to describe a quantum computer that could solve some well-defined set of problems that would take orders of magnitude longer to solve with any currently known techniques running on existing computers. The calculation that Google attempted was pretty simple to understand, unlike Google Buzz. Their experiment consisted of three components, a pseudo random number generator, a random sampling algorithm, and an algorithm that can verify randomness based on the sample. The pseudo random number generator was a quantum circuit. This circuit consisted of a certain random sequence of single and two qubit logical operations with up to 20 of these operations known as gates randomly strung together. The sampling algorithm was another quantum circuit. The randomness verification was done by computing the probability that a given random number appears in a random number sequence sample, then verifying that it did appear that often. This is a pretty simple problem for classical computers to solve for a few random numbers. But the more random numbers you give it, the harder it gets. Basically, it was able to generate a pseudo random number in such a way that it would take a much longer amount of time on a conventional computer to reproduce that same pseudo random number from the same initial conditions. So don't break out the tinfoil hats just yet. Google built a quantum computer that can do something faster than a classical computer, not something useful. So even though that isn't really useful, we now know that quantum computers can do something faster than classical computers can. We can expect the race towards faster quantum computers to speed up as a result, as this opens up lots of possibilities for theoretically solving hard problems in many industries. There are three that I find the most fascinating, security, medicine, and finance. In terms of security, there's this belief that quantum computers are going to be able to break all encryption, which would mean that banks, governments and cryptocurrency networks, which use encryption algorithms for security, would become hackable. Yes, Bitcoin included. But in order for that to be a reality, it's going to require some more technical advances in quantum computing, specifically scalability, i.e. more qubits, and robust quantum error correction. Error correction ensures we get useful results. Classically, it's done by copying and storing information multiple times in case there's an error. Then the output will still give correct answers based on the majority of information all copied bits carry. This turns out to be impossible in quantum computing due to the no cloning theorem, where it states quantum information can't be copied, so error correction must be done differently. Lots of techniques have been proposed in this regard, but we still have a ways to go. 
And when that happens, quantum computers will only be able to break some types of encryption, not all of them. But it turns out that those types include most of what we currently use to secure the internet. RSA, Diffie-Hellman, Elliptic Curve Crypto, and more. So security enthusiasts, we heart you, and you are needed. We need to develop new types of quantum resistant algorithms to prevent these types of attacks. When it comes to medicine, there's huge potential for quantum computing to enable new solutions. The Google team generated a pseudo random number with their quantum computer, but one of the next milestones is likely to be able to use it to do some kind of useful simulation, probably of a condensed matter system much faster than any known classical method could. One step closer to the matrix. Alan Asparu Guzik, assistant professor of chemistry and chemical biology in Harvard's Faculty of Arts and Sciences, said that there is a fundamental problem with simulating quantum systems, such as chemical reactions, on conventional computers. As the size of a system grows, the computational resources required to simulate it grow exponentially. For example, it might take one day to simulate a reaction involving 10 atoms, two days for 11 atoms, four days for 12 atoms, eight days for 13 atoms, and so on. Before long, this would exhaust the world's computational power. If we can simulate a chemical reaction, we can predict the outcome digitally. That would allow us to design new cures for diseases faster and help us understand the human body brain included, at a much deeper level. And then there's finance. Goldman Sachs has invested into D-Wave, a quantum computing company, hoping to find new ways to model financial data that would ultimately help understand key global risk factors. The global market is very computationally expensive to simulate, and financial modeling teams use every trick they can to do so on some level. This helps mitigate risk, which allows them to invest smarter. Quantum computing has huge potential here. If we want to experiment with quantum computing technology ourselves, we've got a few cloud options that we can access from our laptops. D-Wave has a quantum API called Leap with so much well-documented code, Jupyter notebooks included. Yes, you can code quantum algorithms in Python. I think I'm in love. With this technology, anyone can use quantum computing in their web or mobile applications, accessing it from the cloud. There's also IBM's Q network, which also offers an API to try its machines. But a field I find just as interesting as quantum computing is post quantum cryptography, the field dedicated to devising cryptographic algorithms that are thought to be secure in the quantum era with security against both classical and quantum computers. To build a post-quantum crypto system, there are four major research directions that are being pursued. There's hash-based cryptography, which focuses on designing digital signature schemes based on the security of cryptographic hash functions. There's also multivariate-based cryptography. Its security relies on the hardness of solving multivariate systems of equations. There's code-based cryptography, and its security relies on the hardness of problems from coding theory. And there's lattice-based cryptography. A lattice can be thought of as any regularly spaced grid of points stretching out to infinity. Its security relies on the hardness of solving problems based on that paradigm. One of the most important standard setting organizations is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. It's really influential in determining which standardized cryptographic systems see worldwide adoption. All hail NIST. At the end of 2016, they announced that they would hold a multi-year open project with the goal of standardizing new post-quantum cryptographic algorithms. Initially, they selected 82 candidates for further consideration from all submitted algorithms. Today, there are 26 algorithms still in contention. Among them, there are 12 lattice-based schemes, seven code-based, four multivariate-based, one hash-based, and two other-based. It's expected to have the first set of standards by 2025. 
The research direction that seems to be the most active is lattice-based cryptography, and a top technique here is titled the New Hope Algorithm. Google researchers invented this two years ago, guided by the force, probably, and it's an example of a method called learning with errors. Let's discuss how this works at a high level. Learning with errors is a known quantum robust method of cryptography. The idea is that we create a secret key value, S, which is our private key, and another value, E, for errors. Then we create a public key based on random numbers, A, and then generate another set of numbers, B. B is based on A, S, and E. The values of A and B become our public key. A and B are one-dimensional matrices when S is a single value. If we want S to be a one-dimensional matrix instead, A will be a two-dimensional matrix, and B will be a one-dimensional matrix. It turns out that quantum computers can't find the values which solve this equation, where A and B are known. We can implement this very simply with Python and NumPy. The key here is the use of randomness, which quite often turns out to be a very useful concept in security. The New Hope technique is actually a variant of this algorithm called ring learning with errors, but I'll spare you the details since there's a lot of little modifications they added. There are three things to remember from this video. Google achieved quantum supremacy. This is a pivotal moment in history, and it means lots of opportunities for solving incredibly hard problems in fields like medicine, finance, and security. A New Hope is a quantum-resistant algorithm that has the most traction these days. And quantum computing is definitely a topic to learn more about. I've got great resources for you in the video description.